mentioned. Uh, this is the Helping Developers by Podcasting topic, where we're going to talk about uh, my experience in hosting a technical podcast and how you can use that to help reach the development community. First, a little bit about me. As was said, my name is Jaime. Uh, a lot of people who speak English think it looks like Jamie, that's because it's of Spanish origin. But it's very easy, I've discovered, for Japanese to get it. I put the katakana up there, so it's ha, i, me, or haime. It's very easy. I'm an iOS engineer at Simple, which is a fintech company in the United States. You can contact me online on Twitter. My handle is dev with a hair, because I'm a developer. And I have this. You can also go on GitHub and download the presentation slides for this particular presentation. Same username, dev with the hair. And you can find other presentations that I've done as well. As was mentioned, I host a technical podcast named More Than Just Code, which is a show about mobile development. But as you might have guessed from the name, we talk about more than just software development, we talk about business development, we talk about user experience, and we also talk about technology culture. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, some mishmash of those topics. But it's something that has had uh, three hosts, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less depending on availability, sometimes we have special guests, sometimes we're busy with work and other things. But three primary hosts who are split between the United States and Canada, so technically an international podcast. And we've been doing this for almost five years now. In fact, it will be five years coming up this August, and we've been doing it every week, which means, if you do the math, that's roughly around 230 episodes. In fact, it's a little bit more than that. We just recorded one this week while I was in Japan. And each of those episodes averages about 60 to 90 minutes in length. Uh, I see a lot of really surprised faces. Don't worry, uh, our particular show is uh, kind of on the longer side for a technical podcast, to be honest. But that's because we based it on the needs of our listeners and a lot of listener feedback. We said, give me more, give me more, give me more. And we said, okay, we can manage 60 to 90 minutes each week. And I think a key question that I get quite often is, why do a podcast? Why not write a technical article, or put something on a blog, or put something on SNS? Or why not record a video and put it on YouTube? Or something that's really trendy now, which is to live stream something on Twitch. Those are all really good ways. And I'm not saying don't do those. You absolutely can if you want to. The one downside with each of those things that I just talked about is you can only reach developers when they have time and active focus on that. You can't be uh, walking around and reading content. You really shouldn't be driving and watching a video. But a podcast is something that you can listen to while you're doing something else. All those activities that I just described, that's time in somebody's day that could be an opportunity for them to learn something new, something they can't get with other media. But I also think something else that's important is thinking about the realities of software development. We often think that development looks like this, where somebody is at a coffee shop, they have their headphones on, they're focused, and they know exactly what to do. Or maybe we think software development looks like this, where somebody's in the comfort of their own home, they're warm, happy, they know exactly what to do. Based on my experience, and my own personal professional experience, software development actually looks like this a lot of the time, where you feel frustrated and confused. And in this case, sometimes you feel alone, like I'm the only one who's not smart enough to understand what to do. And I think we want people to feel like they're not alone, like they're with friends, like they're with a team. And the most important word to take away from this whole presentation, if nothing else, is that it is about the community. And we want to keep people from feeling like they're just part of a random group in the club. 
too many people around, lost, confused, alone. We want them to feel like they're with friends, like they're part of a group, or they're even part of a team. So that's the why. The next is how. How can you get started in doing this, and how can you get out there reaching your developers with a podcast? There are three easy steps. Number one, know your audience. Number two, have a topic. And number three, record it. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more. <laughs> I'll talk a little bit more about each of these. Um, but I, as an aside, I have definitely had tons of conversations with people who had a great idea. They knew exactly who their audience was, and then they just never actually recorded it. Or, as I'll focus on in this presentation, they did not meet the expectations of what their listeners wanted. So let's talk a little bit about those more in depth. Step one, knowing your audience. And this means you have to understand, who are they? Who is it that you are trying to reach? Who is it that you are trying to teach? Because you might be trying to reach professional software developers working in a corporation on a team. And that's very different than trying to reach students who are new to coding, or people who know how to code, but don't know how to code using your technology or your product and service. So you have to understand the differences between those. And as an aside, the More Than Just Code podcast started out focused primarily on professional software developers, because that's who we were personally. We had a lot of experience in the industry. But slowly we realized that some of the content that we covered or some of the ways that we presented the content was not very inclusive or easy for students. So I try to have a large focus on explaining terminology so that people who are new and people who are just getting started can also enjoy and learn something and they don't feel like, oh, I'm not smart enough or I don't have enough knowledge to understand what's going on here. Another thing you need to think about is, what are they doing? As I mentioned for a podcast, um, it's not something that people normally do like this. They're probably not. I mean, this is the fantasy. They're you know, probably not there with their headphones on, listening to your podcast straight through, and they're just filled with joy with all the teachings that you're giving them. That's what we want, but that's not the reality. That's not where podcasts shine. Instead, they're probably doing this. They're probably walking to catch the bus or the train. Maybe they're going to the store to get groceries. Maybe they're running errands around the house. Also, something that we have found for our particular show and why our listeners like a much longer show of 60 to 90 minutes is we got a lot of feedback that people said, you know, I listen to your show and I learn from you while I'm walking my dog or mowing my lawn. And I'm very unhappy when your show ends and I have to go to my pocket and choose another podcast before I'm completed doing my task. So understanding who your audience is and what they're doing at the time that they're listening to your show is very important if you want to have the most success. So that's step one. Step two is to have a topic. Now I can't give you specific advice on what your topic should specifically be, because that will depend on the company that you represent, it will depend on the products and services that you offer, and it also depends on who you are as an individual and what you are passionate about. Instead, the guidance I want to give you is on the types or categories of topics that you can talk about, just to give you some inspiration. For example, Something that is very popular in the podcasting community, in the technical podcasting community, is to cover news. Because there's just so much going on in the industry, and things change so fast, it's impossible to keep up with everything. And so it's very valuable for developers if you can condense the entire world down to, here are the top 10, the top 5, maybe even just the top 3 things that you should know now. <coughs> Now, this does mean that this content does get out of date. I'm not quite so interested in 
listening to the news from five years ago, I don't know about any of you, but it does have its place, and it doesn't have to be your entire show. It can be just a portion or a segment on your show. Something you might want to focus on, particularly for people who have you know, products and services that do well for this, is the educational or reference type. And in this type, you are spending time through tutorials, or perhaps giving the basics and ground information for here's a new product and service, or here's a new feature. Or you can talk about tips, tricks, or special and secret techniques to help people be more successful when they're getting started with something. And unlike the news type that we talked about, the reference type is something that people can listen to for days, weeks, months, sometimes even years later without having to create new content. And it's something that people can and will go back and refer to. A third type that is kind of near and dear to my heart and where some of the, uh, the length of the More Than Just Code podcast come from is the conversational type. So for this type, it could be in the form of an interview where you're talking to developers on your engineering teams. Maybe you're interviewing somebody who is very important in the industry, like the creator of Ruby, for example. Um, or something that is very valuable from the building the community type is just having a conversation between the hosts on, you know, what was their daily life like in terms of what were their successes? Or what were their failures? The failures thing, just as an aside, is something that's great because a lot of people feel like they're alone, like they're not the only ones getting it. But if they can see that, like, oh, well, so-and-so has this great technical podcast, and they struggle with this technology. So it's OK if I struggle, too. And I would also say you probably should follow up with, well, how did you get past that failure? How did you succeed? Because that's something that people want to know. And it doesn't even have to be just you. Uh, sometimes at our podcast, the hosts themselves can't figure it out together. We're like, well, I really don't have any experience with that technology. And so we'll ask the community and say, hey, come reach us on Twitter. We have our Twitter account. Use hashtag AskMTJC and tell us, what is your experience? How did you solve this problem? And we'll get a lot of interesting advice and, and techniques from people that we then talk about on the very next episode and say, hey, thank you to so-and-so on Twitter. Here's what they said. Here's how they solved it. Thank you so much for helping us out with that. And thank you for helping the community. So that's step two. Step three, the funny one, is recording it. Uh, and I don't want to focus too much on like the equipment part of it, other than to say uh, it's not true that you need special fancy recording equipment that's expensive. You don't need to rent time in a studio. I mean, if you have a budget, sure, like, you'll sound great. You'll sound like an NPR episode or a little, or LeVar Burton Reads or something. That's great. You're probably here because you're not creating a narrative podcast or a storytelling podcast. You're probably creating a technical podcast, which means that you can actually use relatively inexpensive equipment, and you can just sit at a table and talk to each other and make sure you record it. Or, like I mentioned for our show, we can't actually do that because we have people spread through the United States and people spread out through Canada. So we use telecommuting tools like Zoom or Skype or WebEx or a million other video conferencing options that will let you talk to each other and record the conversation that you can put it together. Instead, for recording, I want you to focus on, well, how much time does somebody have? Because we mentioned, OK, you know who your audience is, you know what they're doing, but how much time will make sense for what they're doing, as well as the way that your information can be learned? For example, here, if somebody only has time during coffee breaks, or while they're drinking tea, or while they're eating lunch, you need to either create episodes that are five or ten minutes in length, or if you have a longer show, you're going to have to cut that into little slices so that it can be understood and people won't be confused and lost if it's more than that, and you just want to make sure you fit into that time frame. But if the developers that you're trying to reach are going to work and commuting, 
you have a little bit more time. So you can have a longer show with more in-depth on a singular topic, or you can have a longer show that has many topics that somebody could listen to over 15 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe upwards of 60 minutes for commuting. Let's not forget, though, that there is like the ultimate kind of commuting. And I know this is near and dear for developer relations. And that's when you're traveling for business or maybe traveling on vacation. It's very popular for people to try to catch up on podcasts and technical content while they're en route somewhere else. For example, I came here from the United States. And from where I came from, getting here to Japan took me about 8 to 10 hours. And you better believe I spent a lot of time listening to a lot of podcasts and a lot of episodes with 8 to 10 hours with nothing else to do but sit there and eat and maybe enjoy some in-flight entertainment. So to recap what we have here, those three easy steps, knowing your audience, having a topic, and recording it. And yes, this is a really good slide. If you're, if you're going to remember anything, uh, that's a good one to take a photo of. But in the back of your mind, think about this. The most important word here is community. So make sure you're meeting the needs of the community. Make sure you're listening to the community. Whoever your listeners are that you've identified, make sure you get feedback with them. Don't turn it into just a one-way conversation. Just really make people feel like they're involved. Because the whole goal of what we want is for people to feel like they're coming together, they're leveling up, they're getting stronger, they're getting smarter. And as I said at the beginning, my name is Jaime. That's all my social media stuff that you can find me on. I'm dead with the hair. That's pretty easy to remember, hopefully. The podcast I host is called More Than Just Code. And I'd like to thank you very much for coming here today. I got to thank you so much.